When you say something is inf infinite, which means it never began and it never ends, we can have such a hard time grasping that, but the opposite of infinite is finite. There are higher levels of awareness that are available to us. A level of awareness that allows us to do things like, and it may sound a bit strange, but to manage the coincidences of our lives. To be able to place our attention on what it is that we would like to create for ourselves in our lives. To literally have the power to know that if I think about it and I keep it there and I keep that picture firm within me, that there is an energy, a source, a capacity within me that is in the universe and that is also in me. And that I can use this energy, that I can manage it. There are many ways to get the things that we want for ourselves in our lives. But basically, it all begins with how we choose to think. As you think, so shall you be. Seven little words that I think are perhaps the most important things that we can learn and master in our lives. This old proverb notion that I become what I think about all day long. And once you know that what you think about is what expands, you start getting real careful about what you think about. You don't allow your thoughts to be on anything that you don't want or that you wouldn't want to have manifest or show up for you in your life. Emerson said, the ancestor to every action is a thought. And you can look at every spiritual tradition, whether it's Eastern or Western, whether it's ancient or modern, whether it's civilized, quote, or uncivilized, quote, whether it's tribal. And there is, in all of these persuasions, this idea that inside each and every one of us, in a place that is not material, in a place that has no dimensions, in a place that has no boundaries, that in each and every one of us, we have this power and we have this intelligence and you can never see it. I've often said that when you die, if you're gonna die and five minutes before you're ready to leave, they weigh your body. And let's say it weighs, oh, let's pick a good number, 150 pounds, all right? <laughs> and then life leaves your body and they weigh your body instantly after you're dead. And it still weighs 150 pounds. So that your body weighs the same, alive or dead, before it begins to deteriorate. And if that's the case, then your life, this thing that leaves your body and your body still weighs the same, is weightless. Your life is weightless. You can't put a dimension on it. You can't put a measure on it. Who you are is that life. And that life is not in the dimension of material. It's like, if I want to wiggle my finger, I just have to have a thought. And the thought says, I think I'm going to wiggle my finger. And then I do this and you say, well, that's really no big deal. But it really is a big deal because there's something invisible in here that says, I'm going to wiggle my finger. I've never seen that. I've never been able to, you can, you can put that under an x-ray. You can try to measure that and find out what it is in there that allows you to say, I'm going to wiggle my finger, and you can never find it. It's not in this world. You start becoming aware of the power of thought. And if you look around, just look around you at everything that you see, it all began with a thought. We become what we think about. And that is probably one of the most important principles in learning to manifest. But in my mind, as I think about this idea of getting what you really want and being able to attract it into your life. What, what, what we have to look at is basically the obstacles that we have conditioned ourselves. And you notice I say that we have conditioned ourselves because I have never believed that we need to be putting the responsibility on someone else. If you're conditioned, it's because you have allowed yourself to become that. And if we are conditioned, if we conditioned ourselves to believe certain kinds of things, and one of the things that we kind of believe and hang on to and, and live with is this whole idea that uh, all of the things that happened to me in my past are what are keeping me from doing what I'd like to do today. 
So we hang on to these things and we fill ourselves with blame. You see, there is a stream of healing that is something that we can plug into. It's very much like electricity. People say, well, in ancient Greece, there was no electricity. There was electricity. We just didn't plug into it. That's all. And there's a stream of healing. And when we go into that stream of healing with a knowing, we go to a higher level within ourselves. And we don't allow any doubt in. Basically, in every single one of us, every human being out there, there are two of us. There's two people. The first person in each uh, person is called the ego, or I call it the ego. E-G-O. Earth guide only. All right? This is the part of us that says who I am is separate from you, separate from God, separate from my environment, and therefore I'm in competition with, and my value is based upon how much I get, how much my stuff is worth, how much better looking I might be, or how much more uh, attractive I might be, how much more money I might have, the value of my possessions, and so on. What is mine? So it's not mystical awareness which says I am connected, it is that individual lower level of awareness which says my ego. This is mine. Also in each and every one of us there's another person. And this other person is called what I call the sacred self or the higher self. And this sacred or higher self really doesn't care how much you get. It doesn't care who you're better than. It doesn't care how much stuff you have. It's not interested in any of that. The problem is that we very seldom listen to it. We pay very little attention to it. This higher or sacred part of us wants only one thing. It wants us to be at peace. Something that we call light, something that we call the, the impersonal part of us that is always directing us and it's always directing you as well. You're listening to it sometimes, most of the time we ignore it in the way of, in the name of fitting in or doing when I don't have time or I'm too old or I'm too fat or I'm too skinny or I'm too white or I'm too black or I'm too poor or an endless we go with all of the reasons why we can't fulfill a destiny that we know is ours, that we signed up for, that we're here for in this infinite universe, that who we are is not this physical body that we're in that is here for a moment and gone. Who we are is this infinite intelligence and we forget that. The same intelligence that, is, that created this infinite universe that never ends is you. You manifested in this infinite divine organizing intelligence. You're a part of all of it. Listen to this verse of the Tao Te Ching. It's one of my all-time favorites, verse number 76. A man is born gentle and weak. At his death, he becomes hard and stiff. All things including the grass and the trees, are soft and pliable in life, dry and brittle in death. Stiffness is thus a companion in death. Flexibility is a companion in life. And it's not just for how you exercise, it's how you think, how you think. In front of my place on Maui, there is a beautiful set of 11 or 12 palm trees. And these are like 30, 40, 50 feet tall. They've been there for, I don't know how long, decades. And when the winds come and when the storms come, the storms will blow them over. There they are, watch. And they're just these amazing elastic things. I learned so much from these things. I go out there, when I, would, when I did these, when I wrote the uh, essay in the book on the verse 73, I just went out there with the palm trees and I would just commune with these palm trees and they go all the way up and then they come all the way back. That's a symbol for how we need to think in our own lives. In verse 73, it says, it is heaven's way to conquer without striving. It does not ask, yet it is supplied with all that it needs. It does not hurry, yet it completes everything on time. One of my favorite lines from the Tao, one of my favorite beliefs from the Tao is this, that you're doing nothing. All of you, you're doing nothing. You're just being done. <laughs>